From a photographer's point of view, I think one of the most intimidating factors about possibly starting to work in Corel Painter is this. And I'm going to click right here is our little brush palette, I will say, where all our brushes are held. And you click on this and then you see all of these different brushes that are available to use. You have chalk, you have acrylics, you have oils. And I think first, if you don't have experience working in those mediums, um, that could be a little overwhelming. But if you think about them more for their properties and what they can do and the texture of them, I think it's a little less overwhelming. So I'm going to explain to you um, some of the basics about how brushes work in Corel Painter. So I'm going to just open a plain sheet of paper and I'm going to hit new and for this it just defaults to a plain white sheet of paper. The settings really are not important. And I'm going to pick a brush here, um, opaque acrylic. And I'm picking this brush because basically it's a great brush for just putting down paint and I can also show you how some of the settings affect the brush. Now. One critical thing here is this, the way the icon looks, the way my mouse looks, really not helpful in determining what the brush will do. If I change to, let's say, a chalk, let's say I change to a chalk and I pick the hard square pastel, doesn't look any different than the opaque acrylic. So I'm going to change some of the preferences so I can actually see the what's called it like the texture of the brush. So go into interface and instead of enhanced ghost brush, we're going to pick brush ghost instead and hit OK. And now you'll see that my mouse looks like a piece of chalk. And if I go back to opaque acrylics, I'm going to see the hairs of my brush and I'm also going to see the spacing of my brush and that's and I think that's pretty critical so I don't know why it doesn't default to that. So I have this nice bright blue color and I'm just going to put down some blue paint. Okay. Let me explain some of the settings here up on the top. Size of course is the size of the brush. Uh, not too confusing there. Make the brush smaller, make smaller strokes. The next is the opacity. That's how much, how see-through the paint is going to be when we put it down. So let's say I put it on 50% and you'll see that um, it's not as that I could see more of a um, more paper between the bristles. If I go back to the now, let's say you're playing with a brush and you start playing with all these little buttons up here, and then don't worry because you can always hit reset tool, and it'll take you back to the beginning. And now I have my my big fat brush again, and I'm going to turn the opacity down to. Um, 50% and see what these big fat strokes like uh, look like at 50%. So here we go, big fat strokes. They have a little bit more white coming through. And again, this is where it's important to see what the brush um, looks like, what hairs of the brush look like in your icon. If I go to back to my other, the chalk, and I pick the square hard pastel, of course, it creates a totally different texture there. So it's important, to, I think, to see the brush hairs. So back to my opaque acrylic. I'm going to go back with my opacity just a little bit more. Let's go down to like 10% opacity and see. Now you can really see the change in the opacity. You can see how translucent that paint looks when you go down. I'm going to reset the tool again. So 
I think most critical though is the resatch. And the nice thing is that now with Painter 16, we get these little ex exclamation boxes um, that tells us, you know, how one affects the other, how the resaturation affects the bleed. Um, but the thing I like to think about resatch is if you think of your brush, your you think of your mouse or, um, or your icon as an actual brush and you dip it into paint. 100% resatch means you have the brush full of paint. If you go to 50% resatch, you have the brush 50% filled with paint. Now why is this different than opacity? Well, here is the critical difference right now. If I go down to zero resatch, now my paintbrush is actually like a paintbrush that you just washed off and it's all clean and it doesn't have any paint. So, of course, it's not going to lay any paint down, but it's going to work as a blender. And you see that? You see how it's, it's blending the white and the blue together? It's not going to put any paint down because I don't have any paint on the brush, but depending on how I, if there's paint there, it will start blending the paint together. So now I've, I've created, I've made the, blush, uh, the brush a blender. So I'm going to reset the brush again. So what is the bleed? Um, the bleed is how much that paint spreads off the off the brush. If I have it at a hundred percent bleed, it's really gonna be like smushy paint and just like you can see the edge of the paint is is um, very soft. So if I turn my resatch down to zero and I keep my bleed at a hundred, do you see the difference in the blending now? Look at how it it because again it's it's set to be really smushy. So it's even blending the paint differently now with the bleed at 100. So all these things are critical in setting the brush. And then another really important thing about the brush, I'm gonna reset the brush again. I'm actually gonna get a clean sheet of paper too. So you can see this is the jitter. Um, think of the jitter, just like the word jitter, dance, jitter bug, you jump all over. When you turn the stroke jitter up, um, instead of painting in a straight line, it's going to jump, jump all over a little bit. So with the jitter off, it stays in one, the paint stays in one straight line. Um, when you turn the jitter up, it's the paint is going to dance all over. Now, why would you want that? It depends on the brush. If I go to the chalk, um, back to that brush that was the chalk, and I, I have that right here, the square chalk. It's nice and straight, right? But if I turn up the jitter on the chalk, look at that. Creates a really cool pattern. And then if I turn the resatch down on the brush, well, I can make this really jittery, funky blender that's really going to blend the paint all over, which is great for backgrounds and stuff. So that is the, the simplest explanation. I'm going to reset the chalk, and now it's back to plain chalk, see, so I don't have to worry. If you start working with a brush and it's not the way you expect it, just go over here and hit the reset tool. Um, but this is the most simple explanation of what these things right here, um, the, what we call the brush property bar, um, demyst demystify it a little bit for you. Um, now, you, we have here is the advanced brush controls, and that's a whole nother tutorial. But we will get into that later when you get more familiar with the program.